Hey anime lover welcome back to your channel. I hope you people are doing great. In the last chapter, we saw Dory and Brogy, the giant warriors, arriving on Egghead to help their friends, the Straw Hats, escape. They brought their whole crew along with Oimo and Kashiai. However, they weren't the only ones there. The Blackbeard Pirates also showed up, and we know they always have a purpose. This time, they came for a reason, which we'll find out in this chapter. The chapter is titled I've Been Looking For You, and it starts with Bonnie saying this to Luffy. There's also a reader-requested cover page featuring Law and Bipo. In the cover, Law is sleeping on a snow leopard, which makes Bipo feel awkward. The chapter starts with Dory and Brogy, the giant warriors, arriving at Egghead Island. They tell their crew to sink any enemy ships and be cautious of cannonballs. The crew agrees, and the giants charge into battle. The marines spot them, and a marine officer wonders why the giant pirates are there and what they want. The giant pirates successfully land on the island, causing chaos by destroying marine battleships. Meanwhile, Usopp, Nami, and Chopper are watching from above. Usopp uses binoculars and is overjoyed to see his masters, Dory and Brogy, wondering why they are there. Nami excitedly points out that she sees Oimo and Kashi too. She guesses that the two giants went to Little Garden to bring their leaders, Dory and Brogy. Usopp is deeply moved and relieved to see them, fearing he might not encounter them in Elbaf. A flashback shows how Luffy and the crew helped resolve the giants' duel on Little Garden, leading to a strong friendship between the giants and the Straw Hats. Back to the present, Edison is amazed by the connection between the Straw Hats and the giants. He notices that the giant pirates are causing trouble for the marines and speculates that the giants came running after hearing about the navy's significant operation, which likely painted them in a positive light. Usopp understands the importance of the situation and feels proud and excited, realizing that this is significant news. Usopp explains that the giants are not here for war but to help them against the buster call, so they need to quickly need to wrap up the preparation. He gets a call from Brook on the Thousand Sunny, which is sliding on ice created by Brook. Usopp asks about their location, and Brook sarcastically says they're close but can't stop for tea. Lilith hits Brook, warning that they need to stop or they'll fly off the edge and hit a barrier, making them fry. Lilith, frustrated, calls Brook a numbskull and stresses the seriousness of their situation. On the other end of the call, Jinbei notes that things are heating up and advises being ready to escape at any moment. He expresses concern about Zoro who is currently battling Rob Lucci and mentions that it's not the time for unnecessary fights, they need to focus on escaping from Egghead. In another location, the clash of Zoro's sword and Rob Lucci's nails resounds. Zoro acknowledges Lucci's toughness but insists on wrapping up their duel quickly. Lucci retorts that only the winner can claim such things, teasing Zoro by implying that his crew is waiting for him and considering him a burden. With a smirk, Luchi suggests that Zoro's crew would be better off without him, arguing that sacrificing one member for the rest is a favor and waiting for a corpse is pointless. Enraged, Zoro responds that Luchi seems to think he's the one controlling the outcome of the battle. The scene changes to the seacoast where pacifistas are wrecking marine battleships. Vice Admiral Red King asks for a damage report, learning that 30 smaller ships have already been sunk, and there's no sign of the pacifistas stopping. Faced with an escalating crisis, Vice Admiral Red King orders the withdrawal of smaller vessels, focusing on battleships to avoid vulnerabilities. Marines desperately fire cannons to counter the threat, but Vice Admiral Red King is deeply concerned, realizing they are forced to destroy their own weapons. The focus then shifts to Luffy and the others. Luffy, in his Gear 5 form, is still in the sky. Vegapunk, Sanji, and Bonnie are in front of St. Saturn. Everyone watches Luffy in the sky. Luffy asks Bonnie why she's crying. Tearfully, Bonnie affectionately calls Luffy an idiot, explaining how long she searched for him. Luffy doesn't understand, as he's been right there with her. Bonnie tries to clarify, referring to Luffy's identity as Nika. Luffy still doesn't understand what Nika is, so before Bonnie can explain, he asks her about the weak punch she threw earlier. Bonnie goes along with it, saying she was trying to use a big rubbery attack like Luffy, and if it was weak, Luffy should show her how it's done. She points at Saint Saturn, telling Luffy to punch Saturn hard for Vegapunk's sake, and then they can leave. Luffy notices Vegapunk's condition and Saint Saturn threatens them, calling them filthy cockroaches with no right to live. Luffy gets ready for his attack, demonstrating the perfect punch to Bonnie. He launches his attack to counter Saturn's, but Saturn uses his eye glare. Luffy withstands the attack due to his rubbery body. Luffy declares that Saturn will pay for hurting his friends and uses his new attack, Gum Gum Booming Dawn Gatling, raining down powerful punches on Saturn. Saturn starts bleeding heavily and is thrown back into a building, causing more destruction. Bonnie watches, satisfied with Luffy's attack, and even the non-moving Kuma and injured Vegapunk seem impressed. Luffy finishes his attack by using another fist to send Saturn flying through a half-wrecked building. Luffy, now facing one of the Gorosai, has successfully kicked up a storm. 
Frankie quickly tells Bonnie to use her legs if she wants to escape. Atlas suggests using the island's hover function to leave, urging Vegapunk to make a move. However, Vegapunk, severely injured and covered in blood from the blow by Saturn, advises Bonnie to go ahead without him. He knows that moving could be fatal. Before they can act, Kizaru prepares a laser beam aimed at Bonnie and Vegapunk. However, Sanji arrives and blocks the laser beam, stunning everyone, including Kizaru. Frankie is amazed that someone could deflect a laser, a feat he thought impossible. Sanji states that light can't stand against love, though Kizaru argues that's not how physics works, but he doesn't have a better explanation. While Kizaru is distracted by Sanji, Atlas and the others see it as a chance to escape, even though Vegapunk is too injured to move. Frankie guides Bonnie while Atlas helps Kuma towards the northeast port for their escape. Kizaru, now realizing the group's escape, feels the weight of the situation. He's disappointed that Saturn was knocked out by Luffy and that everyone managed to flee under his watch. Understanding the pressure from the Marines, Kizaru knows they'll expect him to at least capture the escapees after this mess. Meanwhile, Luffy is seen laughing as he leaps behind Sanji. Sanji lights up his cigarette and tells Kizaru to write an apology letter for them. Sanji's bold statement shows his fearless demeanor as he confronts an admiral without any fear, treating the situation as if facing an admiral is now no big deal. The scene goes back to Saturn, who just got a powerful hit from Luffy and crashed into a building. As Saturn tries to recover, a figure approaches, remarking that it's not every day you see one of the five elders on the ground. Confused and concerned, Saturn asks who's there. The scene reveals a woman named Katarina Devon from the Blackbeard Pirates standing beside him. She comments on Saturn's impressive power and the rarity of an elder being down in the dirt. Devon touches Saturn's leg, noting how Luffy's actions have unintentionally helped their mission. Van Auger, also present, draws Saturn's attention, leading him to question the Blackbeard Pirate's motives at Egghead Island. Saturn expresses surprise at seeing Devon, a level 6 prisoner, choosing to serve under Teach. Devon laughs, attributing her allegiance to Blackbeard's uniqueness. With a serious expression, Saturn, curious about Blackbeard's true intentions and the crew's overarching goals, is met with Van Auger's chilling response, Blackbeard's ambition to dominate the world. As Saturn is about to attack Van Auger with his teleportation power, they suddenly teleport somewhere else. Saturn, bewildered and questioning the purpose of the Blackbeard Pirates' visit, wonders why they left without causing more chaos. Van Auger and Devon teleported to a wooded area on the Egghead Coast. Devon is not happy and asks Auger why he didn't warp them further away. Auger admits that he hasn't fully mastered his teleportation power yet. Before they can leave, Caribou starts running towards the Blackbeard Pirates, recognizing them immediately. He calls them out by their titles, addressing Van Auger as Supersonic and Devon as Maiden Hunter. Caribou never expected to meet them in such a place. Caribou enthusiastically expresses his admiration for Blackbeard and dreams of being a part of Teach's crew. So, with this chapter ends. So, friends that's for today's video see you guys in next video.